I'm not especially proud of this, but the first time I ever saw a picture of a rough shark, I laughed my butt off. No disrespect, all shark bodies are beautiful, but it got me thinking though, what makes a shark shark shaped? What traits do all sharks, or at least most sharks, have in common? And why do rough sharks look like that? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. When you picture a shark, you're probably imagining something like this guy, or this guy, or even this beautiful young lady. These are the shark shapes that we see depicted in media most often. But as we've already learned in this series time and again, you can't make too many generalizations when it comes to a large group of animals with a 450 million year evolutionary history. But regardless, I'll give it a shot. Let's start with the head. It's not overstating matters to say that a shark is a sensory powerhouse. It's well known that they have an excellent sense of smell, although the claim that they can sense a drop of blood from a mile away is a bit of a stretch, but that's only because it would break the laws of physics. Still, a shark's sense of smell is estimated to be roughly 10,000 times more sensitive than ours. But perhaps the biggest difference between our nostrils and the nostrils of sharks, called nares, is that nares aren't connected to the gills or any other part of the respiratory system. Their sole function is smell. So if sharks could talk, they'd probably sound like this. Underneath that lovely nose is a big hole where sharks keep their teeth, a place that scientists refer to as mouth. Unlike most animals, a shark's upper jaw is not fused to the rest of the skull. Instead, the jaw floats freely, allowing it to extend forward to capture its prey more effectively. This disconnect also allows both the upper and lower jaw to clamp down independently, which allows for a much stronger bite force than if their upper jaw was connected to the skull, like it is in ours. <coughs> when biting prey, especially prey with claws or teeth, a shark's eyes are especially vulnerable. So to protect them, many sharks cover their eyes with a layer of tissue called a nictitating membrane as they approach their target. You know, the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eyes. Not really though. Shark eyes vary widely from species to species. Some have excellent vision, others have vision closer to mine without contacts and without the crippling astigmatism. Located on the sides of their head, shark eye placement allows for nearly 360 degree field of view. Research indicates that sharks have very poor color vision, but many species can see remarkably well in low light. This is thanks in part to them possessing a tapetum lucidum, a layer of mirror-like tissue behind the retina that reflects light, a trait that they share with cats. And just like a cat, you can call a shark to you by going <laughs> Sharks don't have ears. They should, they'd look hilarious if they did, but they don't. They do have inner ears that function much like our own, only better. Sound travels faster and further underwater than it does on land, so sharks already have a home field advantage. The ear is composed of three compartments, called the succubus, the lasagna, and the ridiculous. No, I'm so sorry. It's the sacculus, the legina, and the utriculus. That makes more sense. These compartments allow sharks to hear the low frequency sounds made by wounded fish from up to a half a mile away. Now what do a tree, an elephant, a car, and a shark all have in common? A trunk. Obviously. In sharks, trunk is the word used to describe the main section of the shark's body, like the torso of a human. Within the trunk is a whole lot of junk. But perhaps the most important piece of junk is an enormous, oil-filled liver that can be up to 30% of their body weight. Because sharks lack the swim bladder of most fish, they need another way to regulate their buoyancy so they don't, you know, 
90% of the liver's weight is oil. And 90% of that oil is a substance called squalene that's far less dense than seawater. A shark's liver basically functions like a big oily life jacket, but it's not enough to control their buoyancy with any real precision. That's where the fins come in. In most fish, the pectoral fins can be pressed flat against their side, but sharks evolved fins that stay rigidly outstretched like an airplane. This not only helps them generate lift, but also allows them to carry more grocery bags. We can't talk about shark fins without looking at the most famous part of a shark's body, the dorsal fin. Or more correctly, dorsal fins, because most species actually have two. The second dorsal fin is normally much smaller than the first, but they both serve the same purpose, stabilizing the shark and preventing them from rolling. See, this is what they would do if they didn't have a dorsal fin. Along with the dorsal fin and pectoral fins, sharks also have an anal fin and a pair of pelvic fins to help with stabilization. In male sharks, the base of the pelvic fins are modified into sperm delivery structures called claspers. Sharks don't have penises, but they kinda have two penises. Alright, that's enough of that. It's time to talk about the tail. Shark tails, woo! My viewers in their 30s are gonna love that reference. The shark's tail is their main mode of propulsion, and the shape of the tail says a lot about a shark's lifestyle. In fast-swimming sharks like Mako's, the upper and lower lobes are roughly the same size. Long-distance swimmers like blue sharks possess a long upper lobe, making them more energy efficient, but less maneuverable. Bottom feeders and slow swimmers like nurse sharks and leopard sharks tend to have very short lower lobes and long, flexible upper lobes. And this brings us at long last to the rough sharks, the five species within family Oxenotidae. This is not a body built for speed, but that's not really a problem because their main food source is worms and other sediment-dwelling invertebrates. Not the type of animals you normally think of as shark food. Rough sharks have a body structure that allows them to cruise slowly over the seafloor with their mouth close to the sand. When prey is sensed, they hit the brakes and stop short to capture a worm before it can escape back into its tunnel. Rough sharks look weird. There is no denying that. But always remember that our perception of normal is dictated entirely by what we are most often exposed to. So while rough sharks don't look quite as sharky as great whites, they are perfectly adapted to the niche that they fill. We'll see another example of this next week, when we meet another totally normal looking shark. One that's so specialized for life on the seafloor, you'd be forgiven for assuming that it's not even a shark. But it is and I'll prove it next week, when we meet one of the most beautiful weirdos in the ocean, the angel shark, order Squatiniformis. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below. Also make sure to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload, and follow me on Instagram if you wanna see me do whatever it is that I do. I'll see you next week. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.